Hello crafty friends, my name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Al. And welcome, or perhaps welcome back, to my channel. Today's video is part of the July 2024 Oh So Inspired Collaboration Hop. This is a hop that I host here on YouTube, where I get together with a team of artists, and we all take inspiration from the same piece and create something new. After you're done with my video, I hope you'll keep hopping along to see what everyone else was inspired to create. You can find the playlist link or their channel links down in that description box, and I'll also have the playlist as an end card at the end of this video. This month's inspiration piece was a card created by Mindy Egan, who is at Mindy Egan Design over on Instagram. There is a picture up on screen now, and you'll actually see it's a few cards that we could have taken inspiration from. As you hop along today, you'll see how Mindy inspired us in a wide variety of ways. Make sure to check out the original piece and Mindy's Instagram account, which are linked down in the description box as well. The main thing that stood out to me on these was kind of like the paint strokes on each of the different cards, so that's what I'm going to use today. As soon as I saw that, I thought about the Bold Brush Strokes Layering Stencil from Tailored Expressions. And you know, when I need a color combo, I love to use my color cube cards. So I'll be choosing a number at random to use today. And guess what? I'm gonna stencil one piece and we're gonna yield two cards. Now, as I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools that I'll be using. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I brought in both of my color cube boxes. Now, if you want more information on these, check out the link in the description box below. I do own both boxes and what these are, they are filled with cards that have photos and color combinations to go with them. I like these because as I've said many times, if it's not a rainbow or two colors, I really can't put colors together. So these are a huge help to me. I have done many live videos and recorded videos using the color cubes. So I will link those playlists as well down in that description box. Now you could definitely flip through these and pick a card, but I like to choose numbers at random and just make myself use it. So for today, random.org chose card number 296 for me. There are 250 cards in each box, so this one will come from box two, and I just flip through until I found the card, and here it is, this beautiful aquatic scene with some coordinating colors. Now this does have six total colors and I do only need five today for my card. So I'm gonna leave off that darkest one at the left. Once I have my color cube card chosen, I bring in my cardstock swatch ring and start matching up the colors. For instance, on this one, I'm gonna start with the blue on the right and I just go to the blues in my ring and try to match it as best as I can. For this one, I decided on snow cone. I repeated this process for the four remaining colors, doing my best to find the closest match. While I'm working on that, I thought I would tell you how I organize my card stocks. The swatch ring here, I put in color order, trying to keep it Roy G. Biv, but when I sort my card stock out on my shelf, I keep that in alphabetical order. It seems to work really well for me. Now that my colors are chosen, I can start the stenciling, which will be onto a piece of cardstock that is eight and a half by five and a half inches. I was planning on going on the same order as the card and starting with that center color, the potato chip. I put some adhesive on the back of this piece to hold it down to my grid paper placemat. And just in case it gets pulled up, I did go ahead and bring in a pencil and mark the corners of where the cardstock starts at. The first stencil I'll use from the two is the one with the three paint strokes because that's going to have my middle color. So I get that put in place trying to center it as best as I can left to right and top to bottom. 
Once that was in place, I brought in some blue tape to hold the stencil down. Now before I get started with my yellow blending brush and the potato chip ink, I did bring in some post-its to cover up the areas I want to make sure I don't accidentally stencil onto. When those were in place, I inked up my yellow blending brush and started with that first opening. I use clockwise and counterclockwise motions and just keep going until I think I have nice coverage. The next color I brought in was Snow Cone, and this will be on the top stroke of the stencil, and I did make sure to replace my sticky notes, so again, I only stencil where I want to. I continued to stencil in all of the strokes. Once I was done with the first three, I moved to the second stencil, and you'll see at the end, I also stenciled above and below, just so it would fill that cardstock all the way across. Now while I work on that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with a crafty question for you. These are just fun questions I like to pose from time to time so we can get to know each other a little bit better. Today's question is inspired by me using color cube cards in this video, and I would like to know where do you like to find color combos at? Is it color cube cards? Is it other people's cards that you see online? Maybe you go to Pinterest. Maybe you just see a pretty picture or an ad or a piece of clothing. I would love to know. Please let me know down in that comment section below and make sure to use the hashtag, hashtag crafty question. You know me anymore. I am always using color cube cards. Here's a look at the finished piece. If you think I did a good job matching those colors, please give this video a thumbs up. As I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be turning this into two cards. So I brought my trimmer in and cut this right in half. And you can decide later where you want those paint strokes, top or bottom. Or you could even do a vertical card and do it on the left or right. Next, I brought in a scrap of 17 pound vellum and I'm gonna cut a couple strips that go behind the sentiment. That way the sentiment will stand out, but because this vellum is pretty thin, you'll still be able to see the color behind it. I cut two strips that were one and a half inches tall and left the length as is. For my final cards, I do want to cut these down a little bit, but I want to cut off as little of the stenciling as I can. So off the left and right, I removed a quarter of an inch, and off the top, I removed a half inch of the white space. That made the final size five inches wide by three and three quarters inches tall. I did want a mat between this and the card base, so I brought in a scrap of the candy corn, and I cut two pieces that were five and a quarter by four inches. For my sentiment, I'm going to be using jalapeno with a hello die from my stash. I cut two of those out, and now I'm gonna start assembling my cards. The first thing I want to do is put on the vellum strips, and you'll see here I left that extra length so that I can fold it around the back of my stencil piece so the adhesive is hidden from the front. I did that with both the strips, and then I added these pieces to their candy corn mats. Next, I brought in some liquid glue and my tweezers to get the sentiments added to the front. Once I have the glue on the back of the piece, I carefully place it onto the vellum and adjust it as needed. For this first card, I put it to the right over the yellow, orange, and blue stenciled pieces. And for the second one, I put it to the left to keep it over those same colors. If I would have put it to the right, the jalapeno would have been behind it and made the word a little bit more difficult to read. Once those had time to dry, I brought in two card bases from my stash and got each of these added to the front center. You might have noticed I am keeping these cards nice and flat for mailing, but I did want to add a little something extra, so I brought in some enamel dots from my stash. I thought this yellow went well with the potato chip, and I ended up adding three around the hello in a triangle. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's two cards and how I incorporated a random color cube card. 
If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to visit the rest of the collaboration team creations and Mindy's account over on Instagram. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.